In this video, we're going to be changing the final drive fluid. Here's the thing. There's already a video on my channel how to do that. So this is a little bit of a different take. And this is a different take now that I've done it a few times um, on three different bikes. So um, first, 180 milliliter 75W90 gear oil. Motul is fine. You can use the BMW as well. Um, the thing is, the final drive fluid in this 2018 GS Adventure was actually only changed a uh, thousand miles ago. It's not due yet. Here's the thing though, um, BMW and their 600 mile service, which they included it for free in the purchase of this bike, it was one of our um, negotiating factors in buying this demo bike. Um, they're not instructed to lubricate the uh, final drive splines, so they didn't do that, I know that. Um, and they also didn't use, I can't remember which one it is, but I think it's this one. They also didn't use a uh, high intensity magnet from Beamer Boneyard of the final drive um, um, plug. So um, this thing is like 150 times stronger than the magnet inside of the final drive uh, plug that comes on the bike. And uh, that's why I'm using this. So this is kind of a, I want to gather more metals um, when I'm riding this year. It comes with the uh, the um, rubber grommet you're going to need. You should also, while you're ordering from Beamer Boneyard, grab these as well. This is kind of your final drive washer kit. Should get you through about you know, six or seven changes. Uh, 40,000 miles. So, um, so I'm installing a stronger magnet. I'm lubricating the splines. Um, I'm going to make sure they didn't put more than 180 milliliters in here. And then finally, um, I'm going to show off a new tool that I've been using for a while now, which I'll show in a second. It's basically a perfect, perfectly measured squeeze ball that actually screws into this hole right here. And it makes changing it super easy. The thing is the guy makes them at his house. So, um, I'll link to his ADV rider thread, but he probably isn't making them anymore. I think it was 20 bucks, so, um, oh well. And then finally, after this video, I'll be doing a few different modifications that involve the final drive, because this is about um, two to $5,000 in parts if you damage it, and uh, so I want to protect it. So that's a whole long video. We're going to get into it now by starting off with um, draining the final drive. You can't lube the spine, uh, spine, uh, spinals. You can't lube your splines without the final drive uh, free of fluid. Okay, let's get started. All right, first step, the, uh, the bottom bolt is actually a T45. The top is a T40. Not sure why BMW couldn't make it the same. <laughs> so let's start that process. Let me get down on my knees here, because I don't have a lift. Get that started, get our never to be used again cup ready. Oh, actually, we have a new addition to the channel, gloves. <laughs> this is something that uh, uh, have been overdue for a while. I actually have had them for a while and I've used them in maybe one previous video, but Guys, when you're dealing with these kind of fluids like this, gloves are just awesome. There we go. Starting that drainage process there. Now let's do the top. No, I actually, I actually can't remember if um, this isn't changed with the wheel being on or off. That's better. You do need to remove the top bolt in order to break free of the suction. All right, so there's that. Now let's quickly compare the new uh, final drive piece with the old one. one. So as far as side by side goes, well, this is black that has uh, metal in it. So they're both magnetic. All right, so we've got a, a bolt here off the bike. As you can see, this is the, uh, the Beamer Boneyard option right there. So um, it takes a pretty good pull. Uh, it's not, not incredibly strong or incredibly hard, but it's a pretty good pull compared to the um, OEM one. 
it actually starts to like fall off when you start to pull it off. I mean, it just kind of falls off like they're not even there's not even a magnet there at all. So um, I mean, it's not very scientific, but you're taking a magnet that's barely doing anything at all and you're changing it out for a really strong one. So worthy upgrade in my opinion, just, just throwing it out. All right, so now that we're completely drained out, we'll leave this under here for a little bit longer. You can see though that we have, stuff stinks, that we have uh, still a lot of black gunk in there. That's the Molly that BMW puts in from the factory. So that's why the 600 mile change is so important because the first change is really like, completely black and this change is obviously uh, mostly yellow with black so every time you change it you'll get less more and more of that molly taken out of there all right so now we're going to be dropping the final drive uh, how we're going to do that is we're going to first um, remove this bit right here on the back side i'll show that in a second the two caliper bolts take the caliper off well have it loose then loosen this guy up and the rest will just drop right down. It's uh, good to have it on the center stand because you and, and always put something kind of underneath here just in case it drops too far. Let's go ahead and loosen up this back piece over here first. It's nothing too crazy. It's just a uh, T30 on the rear here. I'm pretty sure it's a speed sensor of some corner kind. And if you have the, the final drive full of gear oil, uh, it will seep through here when you take this off. So take that the side and then yank this guy right out of there. Now let's go and take the brake caliper off of the rotor. Now this will be really hard the first time you do it. Uh, it is lo locked with some really serious thread locker. All right, we hit it with a heat gun and it's moving now. There's the fall. Get this brake caliper out of the way and just gently let it down. Now this first time, this thing's gonna be really in there so you can uh, help this over out a little bit and then hold and let it fall. Whew. Okay, good. <laughs> that was a little bit scary that first time. I'm gonna give this a little bit. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Fell on its own. Uh, splines actually look they like they've been lubed. And there we go. Plenty of molly glee grease around them. I would say that it looks pretty good in there. Let's check out the uh, drive shaft. Yeah. I'm actually pretty happy with that. It's well looped. I don't think I need to do anything at all in there. <laughs> wow. All right then. That's um. That's really comforting. I'm gonna clean up the the boot a little bit, and then I'll stick it back on. Wow. Pretty cool. Okay. So now to get this all back together, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your. Uh, your bolt here prepped um, for insertion. And get that ready to go. You can hang it right here if you want to a little bit off the edge. But what you wanna do, and, and that's why that two by four came in handy, it's holding the brake, brake rotor up. Um, we're going to lift, this thing is, don't underestimate, it's pretty heavy. You're gonna grab this here and kind of get that lined up. Now, um, a lot of people, before I continue, a lot of people actually can use like, a, if you use like a, a metal coat hanger and kind of do that. That's one way to hold this up. Uh, you can also use some twine, but do, you do your best to get this lined up in there. Okay, there's that. Now, what you're going to do next, so you don't get this to fall down, is we're going to uh, 
drop this brake caliper down. And we're going to feed in this bolt right here. Just a little bit, just that way you have that locked up. Um, and then go and cut this guy as well. Now, one common issue is that uh, people will um, fail to uh, lock the bottom ones as well. So make sure the bottom ones are also locked. That's a, a common issue there. All right, Whew. now we're going to um, start by getting this screwed all the way in. Make sure this is up top like that. Actually, I'm gonna keep that right there for now. Get all this put back. That can go in there, we fit. Okay, now that's reinstalled. that uh, obviously has measuring on the side and has this awesome cool cap up top. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill this to 180. All right, 180. Now what you're gonna do is you're not going to over squeeze this, but you're going to first attach this here on the final drive. Then obviously make sure the bottom is is uh, screwed in. Take this here. Now, like I said, you're not going to over squeeze this. You're just gonna put this upside down. Give it light squeezes to get it started. Just like that. And when you're done, Take this here, unscrew it. And lift it right up. No need to over tighten this. You've already measured, so uh, you don't have to uh, worry about watching it too much. And then finally, you can squeeze it, but don't squeeze it a lot. We can just unscrew this. And uh, reinstall this. The uh, washer's already in there, by the way. And this is not one of those you over torque. I think it's like 12 or 15 pound feet. Um, okay, so we've basically, 
this isn't really a, a final drive uh, change tutorial, but I thought it was nice to incorporate the final drive change and the spline lube in one. Um, so here you go. I hope you guys get one of these. It's really cool to have. You could probably make one yourself as well for like ten or eleven dollars. The big, biggest cost being the uh, the flange right here in the fitting. All right, guys. Well, ride safe. Thanks for watching.